so in this video we are going to be building a chat application using django and uh web sockets django channels and web sockets so this is going to be like a demo of what we are going to be building in this video so it's going to be like a chat room where multiple users can sign up using a username and enter whatever chat room they want so let me use a username of let's say um tutorial or no let me use the username of jane right here and the room name is going to be uh, testing room now for the second user i'm just going to put in a name of do and i'm going to enter the same room i'm going to submit here and submit here now once i send a message here it's going to pop up immediately in this uh, second user's uh, screen so i'm going to say i do once I send that, you will notice that the message gets displayed immediately. And this is possible through WebSocket. Now, I'll, I'll reply here and say, hi, Jane. How are you? Now, I'm going to send this. And you can see that we can see the name, uh, we can see the actual message, and we can see the sender. Now, I could also log into this room, but I am going to use a different username. And instead of using Jane, I'm going to say Jack. Now, once I log in as Jack into this chat room, I can see the uh, the other messages that have been created by Jane and by Do. So I'm going to say hello, I am Jack. So once I send that, you can see that the message has been sent on all ends for all users that are logged into this chat room, and you can see the message, and you can also see the sender. And this happens immediately, and it's very fast. And this is very exciting because we were able to use because we are going to be utilizing and using web sockets to build this so if you want to get all the code to this project there's going to be a link in the description and if you have any question you can ask in the comment section and i am going to reply you so let's begin hello and welcome to this youtube video in this video i will be teaching you how to build a chat application using django web sockets now what we have or what i have right here is a readme file that i had prepared a while back and this is what we will be following in order to build this chat application so we are going to be following it step by step now the first step that uh we need to take is or is that we need to set up the actual django project now in order to set up the actual django project we need to create uh and enter the desired directory for the project setup now, if I come to my terminal, I am in a, in a folder called tutorial. And if I see the contents of this tutorial, I had created a folder called chat channels. Now, that is the folder where this project is going to be built in. I'm just going to enter that folder. I'm going to say cd uh, chat channels. Uh, okay, that was a mistake. cd chat channels. So now that I am inside that folder, let's look at the readme file. It now says that we need to create a virtual environment. So what exactly is a virtual environment? A virtual environment is an isolated development environment where everything we do inside is totally independent of what happens outside. That is like the bare bones definition. But I guess you already know what a virtual environment is if you are watching this tutorial. Now, I create my virtual environment by using the pip env shell command. Now, this is a library that the pip env library is a library that you can use to create virtual environments. If you don't have it, you can run pip install pip env. Now, I already have it installed, so it's going to see requirements already satisfied. So, I am going to proceed to create this virtual environment inside my projects folder. Now, if you have another way of creating virtual environment, by all means, I want you to proceed and create the virtual environment in that way. And if you want to follow my step, the first uh, thing you need to do is in actually install this library. So you run the command pip install pip env. Now, once you run this, it will install this for you. Because I already have it installed, it says requirement already satisfied. So the next thing that you need to do is run the command pip env shell. Now, this is going to create a virtual environment for us. And immediately it creates it, it activates the virtual environment, as you can see here. Now, the name that it gives this virtual environment is the name of your current working directory where the environment was created. 
If I say PWD, you see that I am inside a folder called Blog API Tutorial, and the name of my virtual environment is Blog API Tutorial. Right. So we can see that we're currently inside a virtual environment. If you would like to exit it, just type exit and you will see that you have been exited. And if you and if you write, would like to reactivate this virtual environment, you just simply run the command pip env shell once again and it will reactivate that virtual environment. Now, the next step that we need to take according to the readme file is that we need to install Django because you know, we are building this project with Django. To go to your terminal, I'm going to click, I run the command pip install Django. So this is just going to install the Django library inside the virtual environment. Right, so as we can see now, Django has installed. But before I proceed, I would like to briefly explain what um, WebSockets are. So just um, explain it and go over it. So I have a definition here and I'm going to explain it in further detail. The definition says WebSockets are a communication protocol that enables real-time real -time bidirectional communication between a client like a web browser and a server. So unlike traditional HTTP, which follows uh, the request response model, WebSockets allows data to be sent and received asynchronously. This feature, uh, this enables features like live updates, chat applications, and real-time collaboration in web development. So just think of, just think about it as a way to asynchronously send and receive data almost instantly between uh, various computers which are connected to the WebSocket. Think of it as a continuous open connection that facilitates uh, instant communication between the client and the server. So it makes it ideal for scenarios where real-time interaction is crucial. So for example, when you are playing like a multiplayer game, for example, I like playing a lot of Call of Duty. Now the way uh, you are able to fire the gun and the way the user is able to see that you fired your gun on his end is um, being on to web sockets. So web, web sockets just help us send and receive data asynchronously in like almost instantly. In fact, it's instant. So this is what we are going to be talking about today in this video. So now that I have Django installed, uh, we need to create a project. So I'm just going to run this command. So I am not going to be typing most of this command since I already prepared them in my uh, project. So I'm going to run Django-admin stars project and I call the project chat PRG. Now, if I say ls to see the contents of this folder, I can see that I have chat PRG created. So I am going to cd into chat PRG. And if I say ls, I can see my chat, my projects folder and my manage.py file. Now, the next step that we need to take is that we need to create an app called chat app. So I will just go to um, my terminal and run python manage the py start app and I'll call it chat app. So once I run that and I type ls, you can see that I have my chat app and I have my chat prg. Um, I have my app folder and my project folders created. Now the next step is we need to open this project in your code editor. So I am going to be making use of Visual Studio Code. So I will just come and um, you can see that I already opened the projects folder in Visual Studio Code. And we can see the app folder and the projects folder. So just make sure you open um, the folder where you have your manage.py, which is the base directory. Make sure you open it in Visual Studio Code. Now, the next step is that we need to create a templates folder and register it in the settings.py file in the project. So in here, I will just come and create a folder and call it templates. Now, after creating this templates folder, I need to come to my settings.py file in my uh in my project and scroll down to this line line 57 and in here i'm just going to type in quotes templates and save it so i'm just letting django know that i have a templates folder that i have created now the next step that we need to take is that we need to register the app that we had just created in my settings.py file now if you remember we had created an app called chat app so I'm just running through this installation because I expect that you already know how to set up a Django project. I'm going to call this chat app. Now leave a comma right there. 
then the next step is that we need to register the app so okay we've done that we need to create urls for the app and register them in the project urls file so i am going to come to my chat app and create a urls file and i'll call it urls.py because i want to have a separate uh, routing file for my application instead of using a routing file in the project so that i can keep everything clean and separated so inside the urls file inside my app folder i am just going to write a few like from django.urls import path not repath import path and then sorry and the next thing is from dot import views so the reason why i'm saying this is from this current working directory import the views.py file now we are going to be creating some views and we are going to be mapping those views to the urls so that is why i am importing the views file into the urls file now the next thing is we need to create a url patterns list i'll see url patterns all to empty list now if you notice i am getting an error it's not recognizing django what i need to do is just change the uh, set the virtual environment which i called that on for channels which is that so once i pick is the error should this so right now uh the readme file says that after creating the uh, url file in the app folder we need to register it in the project directory so i'm just going to come to my project directory right here and after path i'm going to type in include i n c l u so after typing in include, I'll just register that URL. I'm going to say quotes, comma, include that app dot URLs. So it's just going to go into my chat app folder and it is going to uh, take note of this URLs file. Let me zoom out now. So after doing that, the next step we need to take is that we need to install the proper the libraries that we need for our projects to run smoothly first we need to install django channels so just run this command pip install django dash channels so i'm going to paste it in my terminal and after doing that i'm also going to install daphne pip install daphne i'm just going to copy that also and i will paste it so we're just installing the libraries that we need for our projects to run smoothly. Now, after installing Daphne, we also need to install uh, a third library, which is just called Channels, without the Django Channels beside those Channels. And notice that every time I install Django Channels and I try using Channels, it gives an error. So after this finishes uh, installing, we're going to install Channels next. All right, so now we see that uh, Daphne has finished installing. I'm just going to run pip install channels. And once I run that, it should just install uh, channels for us. So pip install channels. So I'm just going to wait for that to get back. All right, so right now we have installed the libraries that we need. Let me just clear out my terminal. Now, the next step is that we need to add Daphne and channels to the installed apps in our settings.py file. And make sure that you add Daphne at the top of the installed apps. So just come to your settings and scroll to installed apps. And at the top, just paste Daphne. And at the bottom, or anywhere you want, and paste channels. I'm just going to paste uh, channels here. But you have to make sure that Daphne is the first item stored apps. So after we've added these uh, um, items to the installed apps list, what we now need to do is we need to create special files which are going to help us in creating our, our web sockets. Now these files are called routing.py and consumers.py. We are not going to be working with them for now, but in the future, in this video, we are going to be writing code into these files so i want you to go to your app folder which is chat app and create a file called routing 
and then I want you to create another folder called consumers. E O N I. So routing.py and consumers.py. So after creating those files, now we need to now actually create our models according to the README file. So we need to create our models and dictate how our database is going to be structured. So I'm just going to clear out routing those pi consumers, my URLs and settings. So we need to create these modules. Now I need to explain how this chart application works. Now when I'm sure you must have seen it in the preview of this video, but I'm just going to explain again. Now when somebody visits our website, they are going to be brought to the landing page, which is going to be um, a, a page where they can either enter a room or create a room. Now, if they create a room or enter a room, they are going to be redirected to the detailed page of that room. Now, it is in that room where we are going to have messages. Now, the messages that are sent or received in that room are going to be saved to the room objects using a foreign key. Now, we are, we are going to see how this is all going to come together. But I want you to go to your models.py file in your app folder. And I'm just going to copy this instead of writing it again. So just copy room, get this out. Copy the room object and copy the message uh, class, I mean, not object. So right now I have the, the room class and I have the message room, I have the message model class. Now, if you notice, every message has to be assigned to a room object. And it is assigned to a room object via foreign key. So it means every message that is created will definitely have a room. Will, ha will definitely have a room assigned to it. And if you notice here, after the uh, room object has been passed into the foreign key, I am saying on delete equals models.cascade. So what that means is that if a room gets deleted, all the messages that have been created in that room also get deleted. That is what models.cascade does. After creating these models right now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to make migrations and migrate because we have made changes to our models.py file. So the first command that I'm going to run is just make migrations. So I will copy this command from my readme file, come to my terminal and paste it. So we're just running make migrations because we want to prepare the database for changes which are about to be applied. Then we now run migrate so that those changes will be applied to database. Now it's saying no changes detected for me because I had already run make migrations and migrate. And also if I run Python manage.py migrate, it's going to say no migrations to apply because I already did this off video. Why not recording? I mean, so now that we have made migrations and migrated, the next thing that we need to do is that we need to register these models that we had just created in our admin.py file so that we can view them in the admin dashboard that Django gives us. So go to your admin.py file and we are going to need to type a few things. So I'm just going to copy those things from the readme file so that I don't have to paste them, um, type them I mean. And I'll just paste them here. So let's look at the code. First, we are saying from dot models import star. So what that means is that from your models file, we are just trying to import everything. We are trying to import the room class and the message class. And after importing those two model classes, we are just registering them in our admin.py file. Now, once I save it, we will be able to view um, these models and the data in, we, in the admin.py file. Now, the next step that we need to take is we need to get the templates files that we need. Now, there's going to be in a link in the description that will take you to the GitHub repo where you can get these two files, index.html file and the message.html files, as these are the files that we are going to be working with in the, the uh, front-end HTML files that we are going to be working with in this project. Now, I already have them somewhere. These are the two files. I have them on my local computer. So I will just move them to my projects folder the templates folder i mean which i had created earlier so make sure you put the two files inside the templates folder that we had created now after uh taking these steps 
we now need to move on to step six which is to create views so we need to create two views the create room view and the message view so we'll head to your views.py file inside your app folder and then i will just copy uh these things these two views we are going to explain what is going on i'm going to copy that and copy this and i'm going to paste it paste them so right now let's uh analyze this code we've created um a view called create room and it takes a request and it's a view function now we're just returning index.html which is present in our templates file um templates directory now in the second view we need to return underscore message.html which is in our templates folder also so right now we've created these two views the next step is that we need to map this view to urls as uh is is written in the uh, template in the readme file i mean so i will just copy this head to the urls.py file inside your app folder and make sure you just paste these things right there make sure you have from dot import views and then okay i already have this so make sure you have a uh, path imported make sure you have views imported now let's talk about what is going on in uh let me just close this let's talk about what is going on right now in this url so we have this first url called uh we've named this creates room and then what we are doing here is we are mapping this creates room view to this url and if you notice we didn't pass in anything in here so it's going to be the landing page it's going to be our base url so when we visit localhost in our browser we are going to be brought to this view which is going to return index.htm now we have another url called uh, room now this uh, url is going to be is what we mapped to the message view now this message view is just going to be where users can send messages to each other and also view messages so it's like the detail page of uh of a chat room and if you notice it takes in two parameters it takes in room name which is going to be the name of the room that is created here and then it's we're also taking a username so the username is going to be the person that is currently logged into this room because we are not using any form of authentication like django's uh authentication class we just want to make this very simple so we're going to be uh doing it this way we're going to pass in the person's username which they will enter from create room and the room name which will also be gotten from the create room view now that we've pasted these urls just save it now if you are confused at this point you can feel free to ask a question in the comment section and also i want you to note that as we build upon this project things are going to become clearer as to why we are making some decisions and taking some steps now let's move forward after mapping those views to the urls the next thing is that we need to view the create room uh, view in the browser to make sure our setup works so to make sure our setup works let's just come to the terminal or run python manage.py run server so once we do that it's just going to start up a local development server for us that we can uh paste in the the browser so i'm just going to come to the new tab and press one and type the local host url and once i press enter okay, let me check to make sure running it says you do not have asgi application near to run server okay now we are getting an error and this is an important error if you head over to your settings.py file which is in your project folder so let's navigate to our project folder you will notice that we have two things installed we have daphne inst um, imported into our installed apps and then we have channels so now let us just comment daphne out and comment channels out since we are not using them for now so once we comment those out and try to run our server you see that our server is running smooth now i am going to explain eventually why we got that error but for now let's just go to the browser and visit this url and when we visit it you can see that we are in the create room uh view and if we go back to the browser that view is being re that uh page is being returned from this view right here which is the create room view 
And if we go back, you can see it just asks for username and room name. So right now we know that our setup is working and the terminal is still working, it's still running. So we can see that our server is running and our project sort of setup was successful. Now we need to move on to the next step. The next step is that we need to allow users to log in or create chat rooms in create room view. So we need to head back to um, our templates folder and open the index.html page. So I'm just going to close the URLs file, close the admin. Now in the readme file, it says in your index.html file, make sure CSRF token is present in the form. So I will just copy this and come to the index.html file. Oh, and what do you know? I had already put CSRF token in HTML file. So we don't have to worry about that. Now let's move uh, ahead. Now it says in your Django create room view, check for incoming post requests. So now let me explain what that is. I, I had said earlier that the way this uh, project works is that users can come and create rooms. And then when they create that room uh, from this page, they'll be redirected to the room detail of the room they had just created. So what I mean is I could come here, type a username, come here, type a room name. And once I hit submit, I, I am supposed to be redirected to the detail page of that room. Now, since we are going to be filling this form and submitting, it means we are sending post requests to the view, which is rendering that HTML file, which is the create room view. So right now I'm just going to copy that and paste it in my views.py file. Now, before we do that, or after we do that, we need to come back to the index file and make sure that our form has a method of post. So now we can see that the form has a method of post and anytime the form is submit, a post request is sent to this view. So now we've, able, we've been able to do that. The next step is now retrieve user enter data. So now that the user has submitted this data, we now need to grab what the user has entered in this field. So I am just going to come and copy this and I'll paste it here and I'm going to explain how that works. Now, if you notice here, I said username is equals to request or post username and room name is equals to request or post room. If I come to my uh, HTML file, notice that the input fields have a name attribute of username and second one has a name attribute of room. If this were user underscore name, I would have to change this to also user underscore name. So what this means is just that the name attribute helps to us. The name attribute serves as a unique, a unique identifier or a key, which we can use to grab what the user entered in this input field. So I will just uh, control Z to where it was before. Now we have the username and the room name in our backend. So what do we now do in the next step? Now we need to do, do, the, do, do two things. We need to uh, create try and accept blocks to either get the room object or create it if it does not exist. So I am just going to copy this code and I will explain uh, what it does. So head to your views.py file and right here, you need to paste this try and accept block. Now you'll notice that we are getting an error because the program doesn't know what room is. So we need to import room. We will say from dot models import room. Now we have room imported. So what uh, we are trying to do here in essence is that we want to see if that room object exists in database so that instead of uh, the user trying to create a room that already exists, we are just trying to see if that room exists. Now, if this doesn't exist, it's going to give an error saying room does not exist. So that is why we have an accept block to patch this error. So we are now saying accept room dot does not exist. Then we want to create that new room. Now the reason why we are passing in room name equals room is because the user enters the room name in this field, and then we are able to grab that value on the back end at line eight. Then we want to try and filter through the database, or we want to filter through the database, get a room object that is equal to what the user had already entered. Now, if no room with that uh, name exists, it's just going to create that room. So when a user types in a room name, whether or not the room exists or not, 
we know that our backend is able to handle uh, the exception. So what now happens after this room is created? We now need to test the code, see if it works. So let's save this. Head to our uh, our admin um, our front end and refresh. Now we need to make sure that the terminal is server is running. Okay, server is running. Now what we need to uh, what we need to do next is we need to just fill this form. I'm going to type in username as test, and then the room name. I'm going to say it is test room. Now once I hit submit. Um, the page reloaded, but nothing happened. Now, in order to make sure that the data was saved, we are going to come to our terminal. And what we just need to do is that we need to create a super user so that we can have access to the admin dashboard. So I will break out of the terminal right now. And I'm going to run the command python manage.py create super user. I was going to ask me for username. I'll just type in admin. I'm going, to, I'm going to leave the email empty. And for the password, which type in the password. Now type in the password again. Say yes. So now that the super user has been created, I will just run our Django development server. And I'll head over to admin dashboard. Now I'm just going to log in with the details. Right now, once I log into the admin dashboard, you can see that I have this chat app uh, model class right here. And in fact, that we can see this is because we had registered the model class in the window pi file. So now if I click rooms, you'll notice that we have an item called room objects. For you, it's probably going to be saying room objects one. It's saying room objects two for me because I created one earlier then. So this is the second room object. Now, if you notice, it's not returning to us the name the room now that is because i probably made a mistake in my models file right here in the string method possibly it's supposed to be a double underscore once i save that make sure my server is running and i come back to my uh, admin dashboard once i refresh now you can see that test room is being returned back to us and when i clean it and um, click it i can see the room name called test room so now we are sure that our um, front end is working properly. And anytime somebody fills this form, anytime somebody fills this form, data gets sent to our backend, which is in the views, and then the details get saved right here. Now we need to move on to the next step. Now the next step says that uh, we should redirect the person to the message view. Now remember that I had explained that anytime somebody comes to this detail um, to this landing page, they fill in their username and fill in their room name. They are going to be redirected to the detail page of that particular room. So so that they can like chat with and chat and interact with person or other people. So that is what we need to do now. After the user has entered the username and entered the room name, it's going to either create that room, either going to create that room. Uh, right here or it's going to get that room object and then we need this to redirect the person to the room detail page so i am just going to copy the code for that instead of writing it again just to speed things up and i'm going to come down here paste it so what we are simply saying is we want to redirect to room which is this view. and if we check the urls this is uh it has a name called room that is why we are saying we want to redirect to room. But it also takes in two parameters, the room name and the username. And those parameters are then passed into the, uh, the view, which uh, are coming as room name and username. So that is why we need to pass in room name equals room, which uh, the user had specified when built this form. And then we are also passing in username equals username, which they also specified when they filled the form right now once we save this let's head back to uh the front end to test and see if this works. so let's uh reload and then i'm just going to enter the username of let's say john and i'm going to enter a room name of john room something like that 
So once I submit, you notice that we are being redirected to the message view page of uh, the room called John Room. And if you check the URL, it says John Room forward slash John. That is the room name forward slash the username. So you can see that our code is working uh, well. So let's continue building. If we go to the readme file and we scroll down, now we need to work on the message view uh, function. We need to add more code. It says get the room object and return it as well as the room name and username to in the context. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to explain what we are doing. I'm just going to come to my and I'm going to replace message view with this. So we need to import message as the top also. I'm going to say room comma message. Now let's explain what is happening. In the message view, we are sending the room name and the username. So what we want to do is we want to get the room object by the name. So we are saying room.object.get. So we're getting that room object. Now the next thing is we are getting all the messages that have been created in that room. So I say message.objects.filter then room is equals to room. So we want to get all the messages that are created in this room right here. And then after doing that, we are returning the messages, we are returning the room object, and we are also returning the username into the context. And then all that data gets passed into uh, the HTML file via the context when we return it to front end. So once you refresh now, you will notice that there is, there is nothing being displayed no message is being displayed because no message has been sent in this room. Now, these divs that you are seeing here, they just represent uh, the send and receive message block. So let's uh, proceed. Let's save this. Now, the next step is that we need to display the messages from the query set, from the query set in the message.html file. Now, in the views.py file, we are here returning the messages and returning all this data to the front end. But we now have to actually render that data out so that the user can view the messages and who sends those messages right here, chat box. So let's open message.html, this one right here. And we are going to be working with this. So if we look at the uh, readme file, it says we should display messages from the query set in message.html. So let's look for a div that has a class called message. Now I am going to scroll down. And if you notice, this is the class called message. So what we need to do is, oh, I'm just going to uh, come in. Hey, I left something in there. <laughs> so what we need to do is just, we need to copy all of this. Now I'm going to explain why. So just copy that and head back to your message.html file and we are going to paste it here. So let me just indent this properly. So now let's explain what is happening. So first of all, we are looping through all the messages. We are saying for i in messages. Now that is coming from uh, this context item right here, messages, because we got all the messages that have been created in this room and returned it in the context and we gave it a key of messages. So we are looping through and we are saying for i in messages. Now we want to check if that sender of the message is equal to the current user that is on the page. That is, remember that we passed in user equals username and the username is the user that is currently logged into room which is John or whatever username user picked. Now we are saying if uh, the sender of this particular message from this loop, if, the, if that user is equal to the user that is currently logged in, which we got from here, then we want to render that message out in the receive. Sorry, we're saying if it is not equal to the user, I mean, if it is not equal to the user, we want to render that message out in the receive div. But if the sender of the message is equal to the user that is currently logged in, that is where the else block comes in. Then we want to render the message in the send div, which is here. So this is the send div and this is the receive div. 
So we just want to loop through all the messages. And the reason why we can say i.sender is because if we come to the models, you can see that uh, the message, the message class has a sender field. And this just stores whoever sends that message. So we're able to say if i.sender is not equal to the currently logged in user, then we want to render that message out in the receive div. Else, we want to render it out in send div. So let's just save that and go to the readme file. If we scroll down a bit, you see that it says this code uh, is part of your message or HTML file and is responsible for rendering the messages in the chat room. Messages are displayed differently based on whether the sender is the current user or another user. So that is where that is how this section works. So we are not really going to do too much on that section for now, but we are going to uh, come back to it definitely. In the next section of this project right now, we are going to be working on the consumers. Now, before we uh, proceed, remember that we had created two files earlier in this video called consumers.py and routing.py. So we are going to be working with the consumers file right now. Before we start writing any actual code, I would just like to briefly explain what consumers are. So uh, in Django, a consumer is just basically a Python class that handles web, web sockets connections to our backend. Now, another way we can um, explain it is that the consumers just define how applications respond to web sockets events, such as, for example, connecting to our web sockets, disconnecting from it, and receiving messages. So they, they basically handle the logic for handling. Um, they, they basically handle real-time communication and enable you to build features like for example, chat application and live update. So in essence, they just allow uh, applications or other third party services connect to our backend using sockets. So right now we are going to be working with the consumers file. So I'm just going to be making a uh, copying of this. The first thing that we need to do is just make this uh, uh, import. We need to uh, import all these modules. So let's go to the consumers.py file. Just import all these. Modules. Now this is we're just importing JSON, and then we are importing a sync WebSocket consumer, and we are going to be inheriting from this when we want to create. Now we are. I'm also going to explain why we are importing this, and for the last import, we are just importing the models file from our application folder. Now the next step that we need to take is we need to create the, uh, the consumer class. And we're going to call it chat consumer. So I will just copy that onto my consumers.py file. Let me zoom in here. And then if you look at this, we are creating a consumer class called chat consumer and it's inheriting from async WebSocket uh, consumer. Now, after creating this class, we need to now create a connect method. So this method allows um, uh, third party applications, like for example, our front end our HTML file, we are going to be connecting to this um, socket, this uh, consumer, I mean, from our HTML file using JavaScript. Now, this uh, function that we're about to create allows us to connect to this consumer. So I'm just going to copy this and I will paste this right here. So we're saying we're creating an asynchronous function called connect and it accepts two things. Uh, it accepts one thing actually, which is the room name. So we are trying to create uh, an item in this class called room name. So we're saying self dot room name is equals to room underscore self dot scope dot URL route. Now I am going to explain what this line means. Just, uh, just let's just move on, and we are going to come back and I will explain it. I promise. Now the next method that we need to create is called the disconnect method. So what happens when um a client for example like our front end what happens when uh there is a disconnection this is um this is the function that would fire off so let's copy that and paste it so right now we have a connect method and we have a disconnect method now according to the readme file it says in this code section you are creating a django channels consumer called chats consumer it includes the connect method for WebSockets connection setup and the disconnect method for WebSockets disconnection handling. It says these consumers are essential for real-time communication in your Django application. So this is what we have talked about. Now, the next step that we need to take is we need to create 
our URLs for our chat consumer. Now remember that we also created a file called routing.py. So let's open that up and just I'm going to close my models for now. And I'm going to move it close to my uh, consumer so that I can see everything properly. Now, according to the readme file, it says we need to head to the routing.py file and add the file. So let's just I'm just going to copy that and paste it in my routing.py. Remember, I need to save this file. So right now, let's explain what is happening. First of all, we are importing uh, the path. We are importing path from Django.urls. And then we are importing uh, the chat consumer that we had created called chat consumer. We are creating it. We are importing it rather into our routing file. And we are trying to create a path that points to that um, consumer class. And what it says is WebSocket uh, URL patterns. And the path is inside this list of WebSocket URL patterns. So we're just trying to create a URL that we can map to this WebSocket. Now, I said I was going to explain why we are passing in this self-scope URL routes, keyword tags, and room name. If you look at the, um, the actual path in this URL, in this URL, you see we have WS forward slash notification forward slash str room name now anytime uh, a new room is created or anytime a user enters a room they automatically they automatically connect to the web socket of that room now every consumer or every web socket that we are going to be creating is going to have a specific room name so that is why we are trying to pass that room name into url of um, web socket so that anybody that visits that url automatically connects to our chat consumer on the back end so that any message that is being sent there is going to be received by everybody which is connected to that socket so we are setting the room name to whatever is inside uh, this url so if i create a room name for example and it is test anybody that visits um anybody that visits test forward slash whatever username they want is going to be automatically connected to um the room to the socket i mean but we are going to see how it works this might be a little bit confusing but uh you are going to see how it works eventually now what we need to do is we need to register our routing file our routing url in the ahgi.py file in our project so let's open our ahgi file our asgi file so head to chat prj and click asgi.py now we need to just scroll down. Now we need to import a few libraries. So these are the imports that we are going to be uh, making. So let's head back to the ASGI file. And after OS, let's just paste it. So we are from, from channels.routing, we are importing protocol uh, type router, protocol type router and URL router. And from django.code.asgi, we are importing get ASGI application. And then we're just importing that routing file that we created in our application folder. Now, the next step that we need to take is that we need to rename the application uh, variable to Django ASGI application. That is this variable, right? So I'm just going to copy, copy this, come over to my ASGI file. And where you see this application, just replace it with Django underscore ASGI app. Now, the next step that we need to take is we need to add all this. So let's just copy it and paste it here. Now, if you notice before, application was equal to get ASGI application. But now we've made application equals to all this. So what we're simply saying is we are trying to map this uh, WebSocket URL, which we had created here, routing.py file. We are trying to route it here. So we are saying WebSocket colon URL router, and then we are saying routing dot WebSocket URL patterns. Now that is coming from our routing dot py file WebSocket URL patterns. So we are simply just trying to register the URL file, the routing file inside our um ASGI dot py file, so that anytime somebody it that connects to the socket, it's able to map the URL correctly to 
um, our consumer file, which is here. So if you have any questions uh, so far, feel free to leave a question in the comment section. I will reply you. Now, the next step that we need to take is uh, we need to just make sure that this is what the final code looks like in our ASGI file. So this is what everything should look like in the ASGI.py file. And I think that is what everything looks like. So except this comment. Added. Now, the next step is we need to add the ASGI uh, .py configurations and channel layers to settings. Now, if you remember in our settings.py file, when we had left Daphne and channels imported, it gave an error because we hadn't uh, added configuration for our ASGI file inside our settings. So that is why we were getting those errors. Now we have reached the step where we need to update ASGI application. So it says head to settings.py file. Then the first step is update ASGI application in your settings. So I'm just going to copy this head to my settings.py file and we need to paste this right here under WSGI application. So just set ASGI application equals to charsprojects.ehgi.application. If you went with a different project name, make sure uh, you rename it. Now, if you notice, my project name here is chart prj. So I'm going to change this from chart project, chart prj. So chart prj.ehgi.application. Now, the next step that we need to take is we need to add channel layers. So I'm just going to copy this. And I will paste, paste this here. So right now, we, uh, we can now successfully uncomment Daphne and channels. So let's uncomment these two. Now, once we uncomment those, the error we had before should appear, but we're getting an error. Okay, let's scroll down. I think I made a typo. This is supposed to be a lowercase j. That should fix the issue, right? So right now you'll notice that it's saying starting ASGI slash Daphne, slash Daphne version 4.0 development server. That so now we've successfully set up our ASGI file and registered this in our settings.py file. Now it says here is the provided content. Oh, just ignore that. Now what we need to do is we now need to start writing some JavaScript, which is going to help us connect to our consumers which we had created here so for our consumer we have a connect method which uh, connects a user to a particular room name so it comes here and connects you to the socket to a socket that has a room name of whatever you had entered from front end in the previous page and then we have a method for disconnection that handles when a user disconnects from our web socket so right now it says we need to head to our message.html file. So I'll just close the ASGI and I'll close the settings file. Now open uh, the templates directory and open the message.html file. And then it says we just need to create script tags. So I'm going to head to the bottom. We already had, I already have like some custom JavaScript written, but we already have the script tab tags created. Now let's move to the next step. It says this step involves adding script tags to your messages HTML file to embed JavaScript code for handling WebSockets connect. So right now we need to create a new WebSocket. So I'm just going to copy all of this and explain what I'm doing here. So right now we are creating a constant variable called Web WebSockets protocol, and then we are equating this to window location protocol. Now what this basically means is that if uh, the URL that is the domain name that is hosting this website. If it is uh, a secure website, if it is HTTPS, then we're going to be using WSS. But if it isn't HTTPS, then we're just going to be using WS. So it's WS forward slash that. Now, if we go back to our routing file, remember that we had WS WebSocket forward slash notification. So what this line 56 does is just that it's, um, it sets uh, this variable called WebSockets protocol to so either WSS or WS, depending on whether the, just the website is hosted on a secure link, which is HTTPS or HTTP. So right now, 
if we come to the next line it's called ws endpoint so we're just trying to create the endpoint url that is going to map to our routing file so we're trying to create the url right here before actually now connecting to the before actually now creating the web socket now this is the endpoint it's going to be the, the web socket protocol which is going to be wss or ws colon forward slash window.location.href that just simply means whatever domain that this website is currently hosted on so for example it is hosted on localhost so it's going to be wss forward slash localhost then forward slash ws notification then room name now why exactly are we doing this if we check our routing.py file we see that the path is ws forward slash notification forward slash room name now if we come back to the message.html file remember that we had passed in room name as a context from our views.py file right here so we are able to make use of that room name and pass it into the websocket url so it's going to be since we are uh, working on this project locally it's going to be ws forward slash localhost which is the uh, domain on where the uh, server is running on where the project is running and it's going to be forward slash the websocket endpoint url and this routing url is going to connect uh, us to this consumer which we had created now the next step that uh or the next line is just the socket itself that we're creating and then we're saying new web sockets we're using this class that's uh from javascript so i say new web sockets and we are trying to create a new web, web socket using this uh endpoint that we had created here so we're just trying to connect to that uh endpoint which will then connect us to the consumers.py file now once we've done that we just need to save it and come back to the readme.md file now it's just there's just a brief description it says in this part of the code you are creating a new web socket connection in your message.html file it determines the web socket protocol based on whether the application is served over https or http that is what i was explaining right here in this line so whether uh the website is being saved over https or http it's now assigns wss ws web sockets protocol uh constant variable and it now says uh it's saved over https or http and establishes a connection to the web socket endpoint for the specific chat room so that is what i have been trying to explain where the specific chat room name is going to be passed into this url and from this url is going to be passed into our routing.py file and from our routing.py file is going to be passed into our consumers.py file pi file and then that user is going to be connected to that room and we are getting that room name using this variable room underscore name which we are getting from our routing file so right the next step that we now need to take is we need to create event handlers for web socket connections now we have been writing all these code since but we haven't actually tested it but after creating these event handlers for connection we are going to uh, test this code to see if it works so that is the next thing that we are going to do so right now we are at the next phase which is creating event handlers for web sockets connection now if we check the html file you will see that we have written some code uh, that connects the user to our uh, web sockets endpoint so immediately a user logs into this chat room it gets connected to the uh, web sockets immediately from our consumers.py file so this is the connects method and it disconnects method so what we need to do in this next phase is that we need to create uh, event handlers so when a user connects to our web to our web socket successfully we want to be able to see that they have connected successfully so we need to create two events for when the user has connected and when the user has disconnected so i will just be copying these lines and i will paste them so right now we have the first uh event listener so it's socket dot on open so this is just uh an event listener that is going to fire off when uh a user has successfully connected to the web socket those days when the user has connected to the web socket or the client which is the browser or the web page 
has connected to our WebSocket successfully, uh, this event listener is going to fire off and it's going to log onto the console. WebSocket connection opened. And when it disconnects, it's going to say WebSocket connection closed. So let's save that and try to see if this works. So first, I will need to inspect and go to my console. Now, once I refresh, we should see WebSocket. Okay, we are getting an error. In the error, it says um, templates does not exist. Message underscore HTML in line in line thirty one. So I have made a mistake somewhere. The mistake uh, is coming from here, and it's supposed to be underscore uh, message. So once I save that and make sure my server is running. When I come to my browser and refresh, I should see something called, so as you can see, WebSocket connection opened is being displayed in the console for uh, the web page. And that is coming from this page right here. So we have successfully been able to connect to our consumer from the sockets that we created in our HTML page. Now, anytime our sockets disconnect also, uh, the message called WebSocket connection closed is going to be uh, displayed in the console also. So right now, what we need to do is uh, we need to proceed. The next step says create an event listener for sending messages. Now, what we want to do is that anytime a user uh, types something and sends a message, for example, we want to be able to uh, prevent the page from reloading. Because right now, if I hit send, you will notice that the page reloaded. So what I want to do right now is that we want to add an event listener so that when somebody types something and hit send, the page uh, doesn't reload and, it, and, and the data gets sent to our consumer. So we're going to see how we're going to do that. We're just going to create an event listener for the form. Now, before I copy this code, I want to call your attention to the HTML form, which is right here. It has an ID of message form. So we're going to add an event listener to this form for when it is, for when the submit button clicked. So I am just going to come to uh, the readme and copy this form. Now I will, I will explain everything that is happening. But for now, I just want us to write this. So for me, I'm going to paste it and for you, you can just pause and write this code. So right now we have the form that the user types, uh, types the message and fields. We have that form and it has the ID of message dash form. Now, if we come down, we are trying to add an event listener by saying documents or get elements by ID. The message form, which is the ID of uh, this form right here. And we're adding an, an event listener of submit. So it just means when this form is about to be submit, execute the following code. Then we're creating uh, a function and then we're passing an event. So the first thing we're saying is events do prevent defaults. So what this line does is that it prevents the page from reloading anytime we are trying to submit uh, this form. So it prevents the page from reloading. Now, if you look at the next line, it says const message is equal to documents that get elements by ID msg value. What we are simply doing there is that we are coming to this text area which has an ID of msg, and then we are trying to grab whatever the user has typed in. So, for example, if I type I am a YouTuber, the program is going to JavaScript rather is going to go into this input field and grab this I am a YouTuber and assign this to the message variable. So that way we are able to grab whatever the user has typed into the input field. Then the next thing that we are doing is very crucial. We are saying socket.send. Socket is a uh, socket we are created earlier. And then we are saying dot send because after the user has typed this message and has clicked submit, we want to grab that message and send that data to our consumer's file so that our consumer's file can then receive this message and okay, I'm going to clear this out for now so that our, our consumer can receive that message. And after receiving the message, it's going to send the message to other recipients that are currently in the uh, chat room. 
So as we build upon this, you are going to see how exactly it works. So let's proceed. Let, let me now explain what is going on inside this uh, inside this send function. So we are saying json.stringify. So we want to send uh, all this data in a JSON format. The first thing that we're saying is message and we're equating it to this message uh, constant variable. So we're just trying to send whatever the user had typed. And then the key of this uh, message uh, data is message. And the next thing we need to send is room name and sender. The reason why we need to send room name and sender is because when this message is sent to our consumer, we are going to save that message to the database. And if we look at the models, the message model has three fields. It has the room name, which is a foreign key to the room class. And then it has the name of the sender and it has the actual message itself. So we have a bug here also. This is supposed to be a uh, double underscore. So right now we know that we have these three fields and in order to create a new message, we, knew, we need to pass in those fields. So that is why we are sending the message itself, the room name so that we can get the uh, room object class, or, sorry, the room class or the room object, I mean, using the name of the room. We are going to do that uh, in our consumers.py file. And then we're finally sending the sender of this message so that we can also save it. Now let's save that. Now, after doing that, next step is we need to actually now create a method in our consumer to receive and send messages. So right now in our HTML file, we have created this event listener that sent the message to the backend that is to our consumer. But we haven't actually written any uh, method right here that will be responsible for receiving this message and also sending the message to other recipients that are in the chat room. So let us do that now. So let's head back to our to the readme.md file. And the first thing that we need to do, or the next thing I mean that we need to do, you just copy all of this data so i am just going to copy it and come to my uh routing and my consumers.py and paste it so we've copied all of this code i mean not data so this is uh the receive method that is going to help us receive whatever message that is going to be sent from our javascript which is acting like client so right now the message is going the data is going to be sent and it's going to be received in this variable called text underscore data. And what we're just doing here in this line is we are representing it in JSON format. So we're saying JSON loads then text underscore data. Then the next thing is we're just creating a new variable called message and we're equating it to text data JSON, which is the uh, JSONified data which we have gotten from here. Now, what is the next step that we need to take? The next step that we need to take is that we now need to add a send message uh, a send message method because we've added a, a method for receiving the message and we are still going to add more code to that method. I would just like to move my consumers loser. So we are going to add more code to this receive uh, method but the next thing that we need to do is we need to create this send message method. So I'm just going to copy it and we are going to explain what is going on. So let me just copy that and paste it. Okay. So right now, anytime a message is sent to the consumers, that message is going to be sent to every other uh, user that, that is currently connected to that chat room, as I have said before. So now let's break down this send message um, method. So what this method does is that it's going to first receive the actual data that it wants to send to the other users, that it's going to receive the message along with other things. Then we now need to also create a uh, another method called create message. And I'm going to explain why we are doing that. So just follow along with me. So I'm just going to copy this method and I'm going to paste it in my consumers. Now, just follow along with me. I will explain exactly why we are doing this. So the first thing here is we are receiving the message and uh, other data that we also need to create that uh, message and save it to the database because we are, we are receiving the data in the receive uh, method. So from here, we are now going to write extra code that is going to send that data to the send message method. 
Now, from the send message method, we are going to attempt to first create that message and save it in database. And then after doing that, we are going to attempt to send that message to every single user that is connected to that chat room. So after receiving the message, we want to create it and save it in database. So we are uh, we then created a method called create message. Now this method is just uh, responsible for creating and saving that message to the database. The reason why we can't uh, write all of this code in here inside the send message method is because we are going to have an error and it is going to crash if we attempt to do that. We can't perform database uh, manipulation or database jobs inside uh, these asynchronous functions. So what we have to do is we have to create a different function or a different method that will perform that task. And then we have to add this decorator on top called database sync to async. And that is why we had imported it at the top earlier in this video. So the decorator just tells uh, Django that we are trying to perform database actions and database manipulations. So whether you want to add data, you want to delete data, update data or retrieve data, you would have to create a separate function that does that. And then you have to put a decorator called database sync to async. So that is why we created a separate uh, method to do that. Now let's trace the program together. It says await self does create message. So now we are calling this create message method and then we are passing in the data that we have gotten from the events when we said data is equals to event message. Now, after we've gotten this data, which is gotten from the event, we are now passing it into the create message. Now let's look at the create message. For the create message method, it receives the data itself. And after receiving the data, we now need to do some specific things. In order to create, in order to create a message, we first need to um, get the room that message is going to be assigned to because every message has to be assigned to a specific chat room. So since we know that uh, the message is being sent, if we come back to uh, the messages HTML, since we know that the room name, the message, and the sender are being sent to the consumers, so we know that it's going to be easy for us. All we have to do is say room does objects do get. So we're trying to get the room object, which will be assigned to this new message. And then we are saying room name, which is uh, this field right here. And then we're saying room name is equals to data of room underscore name. We're saying room underscore name because right here in the uh, data that we're trying to send from the JavaScript, we gave it a key of room underscore name. So that is why we are saying room underscore name here. So we're saying data, then we're using, um, because it's like a dictionary, we're trying to access the value of room underscore name. So right now we've been able to get the room object right here. Then the next thing that we need to do is, or the next thing that you notice is there is an if condition here saying, if not message just objects or filter, message data is, is uh, message is equals to message data dot exist. So why exactly, uh, why exactly did I write this? Now, I noticed something when I first worked with Socket. What I noticed was that anytime a message is sent to uh, the backend or to the consumers and the program attempts to save this message to the database, it does this same action for every single user that exists in that chat room. So let's say, for example, we have five users that are currently in a chat room and are sending messages. For every single user in that chat room, it's going to come and call this method five times and save the message five times. So I am writing an if condition here to check if that message that the user has typed in already exists in database. So if it exists in database, it simply means that that uh, message has been saved. So I'm writing an if condition to, to prevent that. There's probably a better way of, um, of doing this, but this is the first way I thought of and I just implemented it. So we're just checking to see if this message do, uh, exists. If it does not exist, that is why we said if not. If it does not exist, then we, ju we just want to save the message. So right now, uh, this function or this method just saves the message for us to the database. Now it says new message is equals to message. Then we pass in room is equals to get room by name because it uh, requires a foreign key. 
and the foreign key or the module that is assigned to that foreign key is room so we need to actually pass in a room object so that is why we have to get the room object here then we have to specify the sender but saying sender is equals to data then sender we can just say data sender because in the message or html we passed in sender as the key the username so the user now this user remember that these values room name and user are coming from the views.py file right here where we sent user and room name so i hope you understand what is uh, i hope you are following what is happening right now so after doing that we are just passing in sender and then we're passing in the actual message of message is equals to data then message and then we are saving it so after that message is saved what we now want to do is that we want to create like a dictionary now this dictionary is going to contain the sender of the message and the actual message now we're just creating this dictionary because we want to return this back to uh, every single user or every single client or machine that is connected to our socket so after creating this dictionary that has the sender of the message and the message itself we are now saying await self.send then text data is equals to json.dumps and then we are passing in message is equals to response data so what does this line mean after we've created the message and saved it in the database we are now creating a response that we are going to send out to every single a client or machine or computer that is connected to our web sockets so once you created this response dictionary we are now going to send this response dictionary uh in form of j in of a json format and then we're sending it to every single computer that is connected so we are going to receive that message in real time and the message is going to be displayed right here so right now but in order to actually test that our receive function is working let's just try to print out something let's try to print a um, message because right here we said message is equal to text data json which is the data that we have gotten that is converted into json format now we want to print it and that data is going to be coming from right here so let's just test to see if our messages actually get sent to the database so i'm going to refresh here and for the message, I'll type subscribe. Let's see. All right. Subscribe, please. With a quotation mark. Now, once I send it, you'll notice that once I come to my terminal, we aren't getting any printout. So let me just make sure that, okay, I didn't save my consumers.py file. So after doing that, let us refresh again. Uh, let me type subscribe please to my channel now once i hit send and i come to my terminal you will notice that the message is being displayed you can see message it is the message is subscribed to my channel and then the room name is john room and the sender is john so it's been able to send the room name the sender and the actual message that the sender is uh or the, that the sender has typed so right now we know that our message or our messages are being sent to our backend now from this receive function in from this receive method the next thing that we need to do is that we actually need to call this send message method because after receiving this we want to send a message to every single um user or machine or client that is connected to our socket so after receiving this message and the data and we can see that the data is the message the room name and the sender we now want to send all that data to this send message method so it's like we would like to call the send message method and pass in all that data so that it can create that message in database and send the response to every other user it's connected to our socket so that is what we are going to be doing next so right now what we now need to do is we need to call this send message uh, method from our receive method so i'm just going to paste some code here now let me clear or comment this out so let's analyze what is happening we have a dictionary called event and it's assigned to um 
we have a variable i mean called event and it is assigned to a dictionary now this dictionary has two uh, items the first one is type and the second one is message now let's analyze it for type it is the name of the method that we are trying to call so if we are trying to call a different method from an existing method in our class what we need to do first is specify the type and then we need to call we need to type in the name of the method so since we want to call the send message method i passed in send message in here if you named this uh, method something different make sure you pass whatever name you gave that method into this uh, code now the next thing that i specified was message which is the actual data that we want to send then we're now equating this to this message uh, item right here now after creating this dictionary we have the method we want to call we have the data that we're sending to that method what we now say is await self the channel layer the group send now what exactly does group send mean it means that for every single uh, user that is existing in this socket we want to send this message or we want to perform this uh some specific action for every single user that exists in this um socket or that exists in this group so what we're now saying is self dot room name that is we're trying to perform this action for every single user that exists in this room for example every single user that exists in john room we want to perform this action so we're saying self dot room name and then comma we are calling event which is what we created here so for every single user that exists in this room we want to call the send message method and then we want to send the actual um data that is going to be sent to uh, to the users in this room so right now for every single user it's going to call this function and then it's going to call this uh create message uh, method for every single user also so that is why we uh, decided to add this if to make sure that the message isn't created multiple times for every single user that exists in the uh, socket that, that, that is connected to our web socket uh, to our consumers so i hope uh, that understanding uh, i hope that explanation rather is um proper so now if we come back to our readme file we just have a few uh it's a short description it says in this code section you are defining methods in your Django channels chat consumer. You receive, send, and create messages. These methods handle web sockets communication and message storage in your Django application. Now, the next uh, step is adding a socket event for server responses. Now, we know that we are able to send a message from our HTML page, and we know that the message gets sent to uh, the backend in this form so what we now need to do is uh we know that the message after when we send the message the message that we send gets sent to every other user that is connected to our sockets now what we need to do is now add an event listener to listen for for when the server sends data so because let me explain it properly now we know that uh there is an event listener for when the form is about to be submitted so we are sending that data and the data gets saved in database. Now the, our, our consumer also now sends that message to every single user. So we now need to write uh, a, an event listener to check for when the server or the consumer's file is sending a response to every single user. So that when I send the message, other users can be able to listen, uh, to, can be able to listen for uh, that message being sent from our consumer's file. So the consumer acts like a middleman. We send a message to the consumer. The consumer sends that message to every other user. So we need to write an event listener to make sure that every other user, even including the current user that is sending that message, is listening for incoming uh, responses from the server. So right now, it says adding a socket event listener for server responses. So I'm just going to scroll down to where it is. So this is the part where we listen to the response from consumer on the server. So let's just copy it. It's quite long, but I am going to explain what we are doing. So I am just going to copy this and um, come to my message.html 
and paste it. So now let us explain what is happening. First of all, we are saying sockets does add event listener message. So we are saying, okay, this sockets that we have created, we want you to listen for when uh, the consumer's file or the server sends a response. So that is why we are having adding an event listener saying message. Now we're passing the event and using an arrow function. So what the first thing that we're trying to do is we're trying to grab the message data. That is whatever was sent from the uh, consumers, which is this response data here. And it was sent in a JSON from a JSON dumps. And then we're sending everything right here. And the key is message. So after we're sending it, we're grabbing uh, the data here. We're saying message data is equal to json.pass. And then we're saying events.data. And then we're grabbing the index. We're grabbing uh, this response data using the key message. So that's why we're saying json.pass event.data, which is the actual data that is coming in. And then we're grabbing um, the response data, which is this using the key that we provided, which is message. So that is why we are passing a message here. And the first thing we're doing is we just want to console.log and see if that data is coming in. Now, the next thing that we're doing is we're just uh, creating variables to help us better grab data that we need. So first, we're saying sender is equals to message data. And then we're using um, indexing, sorry. We're grabbing the sender's name using the sender key. Now, the reason why we are doing this is because in the response data, we created a key called sender and a key called message so that we can access the individual um, items for the sender and the message fields. So that is why we are calling sender and message here. Now, the next thing is we, now, we are now checking. We are now saying empty the message inputs field after message has been sent. So you'll notice that when we were testing this code to see anytime we hit send the data was sent to our backend fine but it wasn't actually uh the, the message that the person or the user types wasn't actually cleared from impute field so we would want that to automatically be cleared you know normally if you are like chatting on whatsapp for example anytime you send a message the impute field automatically becomes empty because you had just sent that message so that is why we are trying to uh, set, set, set the message to the input field to be uh, empty. So we are saying if sender is equals to user, that is if the sender of that message that just came in is equals to the user that is currently logged in, then we would just like to clear the input field of that particular, of, of this particular user. And we are saying documents will get elements by ID, MSG. If we scroll to the top a bit, we know that the text area has an ID of MSG. So we're just trying to set the value of that text area to be empty. So that is going to be done using this if condition. As you can see, the comment is here, empty the message input field after a message has been sent. Now, after sending that message, the next thing that we now actually need to do is we need to render the message out in the uh, front end so that all the users can actually see that message. So what we are doing here is we are just going to first of all grab the div, message div. We are going to create a variable called message div, and then we are saying documents or query selector dot message. So what we are simply doing is we are scrolling to the top, and then we are trying to grab this div. If I minimize a bit. We have this div called uh we have this div with a a class of message, and it is inside this div where uh the divs for the receive and send messages that is it is inside this div where the messages are going to be rendered that is what i mean so for the receive message it's going to be rendered here and for the messages that the present logged in user has sent it's going to be rendered here so the messages that this uh user receives are going to be rendered here so since we know that the messages are going to be rendered here we now want to select this parent uh div which has a message of class um as a class of message. So after selecting it, we now want to say if the sender is not equals to the user, that is if the sender of this message that just came in is not equals to the currently logged in user, then we want to say message div.inner.html 
is equals to or is plus equals to give of the receive uh class and then we're appending the message into this div and then we're appending the sender so i would just like to explain what we are doing here if i scroll to the top once more you will notice that we have two divs called receive and send and then the receive div like i said earlier is for messages that the currently logged in user receives so we wrote an if condition to check if the sender of the message that just came in is not equals to the currently logged in user so obviously it means that if a message comes in and i am not the one that sent it it means that i am receiving that message so we want to append or save that message rather we want to append that message to um this parent class um this parent div called this parent div that has a class of message and we are trying to create a new item a new receive div that has that new message and then we're trying to append data to the um paragraph uh tag so that a message can be rendered properly so if i scroll down that is why we are saying a message div dot in html plus equals to so we're trying to append a new uh receive message and then we're putting in the style and other things we're putting in the message here and we're putting in the sender of that message then we have an else else if i i was the one that sent that message i just want to uh create a new div a class of send as uh it is already existing here with the class of send and i would like to display the message so that is all uh all we have to do there and also if you notice when we started this video there was already a function there called function scroll to bottom so you know that anytime you're on whatsapp for example and then you send a message uh or, or a user sends a message the chance is automatically scroll to the bottom where you can see uh, the new message so anytime a new message comes in we would like to call this function scroll to bottom so that you can see the new message that just came in so after all that data has been appended to the chat box or that is after the new message has been appended to the chat box we just want to scroll to the bottom for every single user so that every single user can see the new message that has been sent so that it's the chat box is not is not just stuck at the beginning of the chat so right now let's look at the readme.md file it says add a function for automatic scrolling to bottom that is the one that was already present then the last thing that we need to do is just test the code to see if it works so we have been writing all this code since it's now actually time to test to see if the code is working so i am going to uh open up safari here so that i can test on two different browsers and then i'm just going to open a landing page and i'm going to enter with a different username let's say i want to enter with a username of uh proton guy and the room name is john room so i am trying to enter this specific room that uh john is already logged into so i'm just going to copy that room name to make sure i'm entering the correct room and then i am going to paste that in here now once i hit submit we are going to be brought to this room now i would just like to inspect elements so that we can see what is happening on both ends so i would like to refresh here and refresh here now let's try sending a message from here i'll say hello and once i hit send what do you notice the message gets sent immediately and then uh, if we check the, the browser, my, my Chrome browser, you'll notice that we have all this data being logged to the console. And that is coming from uh, right, right here when we said console.log message data. Now I can come back and reply. And I would say, what's up? Now, once I send that, you'll notice that it is coming in in real time. And I can say, uh, I am doing great. And once I send that, you can see uh, this is being sent in real time. And I could also log into this room with a different username. 
But instead, instead of using John, I'm going to uh, use a username of, let's say, test user. And once I hit enter, I can see that all the messages have been, I can see all the messages that have been sent by Proton Guy, John, and Proton Guy. So now I can send a new message and say, hey guys. So right now, this is simulating a case where we have three users which are logged into the same chat room. So you can see the message that was sent. You can see the actual um, name of the user who sent it. So that is all we are going to talk about in this video today, guys. So if you have any question whatsoever, please feel free to ask me and I will reply you in the comment section. Also, uh, know that you can get the code to this tutorial on my GitHub for free using a link in the description below. Thank you for watching this video, guys. And I'm just going to play around with this a little more. Uh, what is up test user? Just zoom in here a bit. And if I send that, get sent here. And for the test user, I will just say nothing and send it. And it sends immediately. And that is the power of WebSocket. And if I scroll down, I can see that the connection has been working that connection to the web socket has been working successfully and then my messages have been sent successfully.